Okay, everyone, <coughs> nice to talk to you all. It is Poppy Sunday, so I uh, hope you've all got your poppies and we remember the dead today. Now, uh, I want to talk to you about emotion in the martial arts. But as I say, all of my videos are done to support my book. So here's how to be a modern samurai. It's sorry for the different background. It's Sunday evening. I'm sitting down, relaxing by the fire to keep it warm. So uh, today, let's just make it an informal one. I'm uh, going to just chat on. And it's more for my normal followers, this video, as opposed to, um, you know, general public. But here we go. Let's get into it. Right. Emotion and the martial arts. Something I've really come across is the high emotion intensity people have and put a lot of stress and effort into doing for no reason whatsoever, just to defend what they feel is being attacked so let me let me give you an example of this if you're a follower of my channel the other day i put up a video and i spoke about how a japanese man in the 1940s had interviewed and catalogued testimonies from world war ii soldiers who had used katana or tachi in war and had fought with it and how their experience had come about and the answer was, uh, and now I have not fully been through this. This is, I'm taking this from a reference from another book. I would love to get this study and go through it. But I'm actually referencing a book which is referencing that. So, um, but it says in the reference that uh, these Japanese soldiers said they found Kendo was too far, it was too far apart for them and they missed and, and things weren't quite correct. And of course, the sort of bouncing around sports didn't really help them in war, It you know. And uh, I put this video up and it turns out that um, somebody from a kendo dojo has offered me a fight in a kendo school to prove this matter is incorrect. Yeah, think about it. So somebody has offered me a kendo fight, right, to decide whether the academic article as of this gentleman is correct or not. I'm like, can you go to any more lengths of sort of understanding, of, of trying to work out what's going on? So uh, at the same time, a man from an MMA, MMA dojo said, oh, get him here and we'll pound him. Yeah. So so I get in the ring with this MMA guy. Bang. He wins. And he's like, see, the article is not correct. That man didn't get it correct in the 1940s as he pulverizes my face or I pulverize his face. And I say, see, the article is correct. How, what, what logical steps did these gentlemen take to get to that? Another example is um, instead of looking at each individual point or question as an individual with your own brain and your own mind, uh, people automatically will try and find anything to have a go at Anthony. So the other day in a, in a, um, a video, I said, Oda Nobunaga's keep is the first keep to go up. Isn't it surprising how Westers first come to Japan and they bring in the gun, not gunpowder, they bring in the gun. And suddenly we have gun technology in Japan. They have rotating um, gun shooting, all based on Western stuff. And they suddenly get a central keep. And I said, isn't that interesting? Or something to the effect of that's an idea to follow up. Instantly it's become Anthony has said Westerners invented the keep in Japan and the architecture is different. Look at this actor. It's not what Anthony said. He didn't say anything about architecture. It's the concept of central keep seems to become more apparent when Westerners have arrived, about 30 years after Westerners have arrived. I said, it isn't a fact, it's something we should, that's an interesting point. It was an off the cuff, look at that for interesting. The same as everybody assumes guns in Japan came with Westerners. There are guns before the Westerners came. So the we guns were not imported to Japan by Westerners. Muskets or aquabuses were imported to Japan. They had earlier versions of rudimentary cannon. They have fire explosives from Chinese manuals. There's tons of Chinese manuals going around with, and it's and they've known gunpowder at least since the Mongols, and they might have been there earlier. I don't know that. That's what I've said we don't know. So the entire point was, I think there's a bit of a, uh, a coincidence there. What do we think, guys? Anthony's got this wrong. The architecture the in the way. Echo, shut next. up. Bloody woman. So, right, um, randomly talk to her sometimes. So what you find is that people, instead of finding the truth out, 
are thinking, how on earth can I possibly outdo Anthony Cummins? Because if I find he is wrong on one article from the 1940s, it means his attack on my school might be wrong, even though it's nothing to do with that article. And if I beat him in an MMA fight, that means that the history of the documentation of the Bans and Shukai is incorrect. You're like, there's a point, guys, and I'm talking to those few specific people now who are like still entrenched. There's a point where you've got to think, are you on the right path? I wrote this book because I wasn't on the right path and I moved it. And I'll talk about that in a minute. And I wrote that exactly to realign and realign other people's minds. It's about have a think, have a think. So another version of this was um, somebody has said, oh, Anthony only uses um, modern Japanese texts, which I made a video the other day, outright proved them. In fact, I put a challenge out there which could not be met to show, to prove me wrong. And absolutely, you know, guys know, everybody knows we work from original documents. But instead of being like, okay, Anthony works from original documents, fair enough. Uh, they've gone all the way back to a martial arts planet or something article where I said we're working with Nakashima on a modern uh, modern Japanese version and he'll be doing the modern version. We'll all be working from it. Um, to which he's saying, Anthony's lying. But that man has not even used, he's not even thought. So he didn't get it. So the other day, so I'll explain it again. We produced the Banten Shukai in 2013. It took us four years to do. So we roughly did start from 2009, something like that, 2010. It was, I can't remember exactly. Um, but basically, the initial thing was to go with Nakashima and we would all of us work, all of us work from the original documentation, the Banten Shukai. But Nakashima's purpose was to pull out a Japanese Banten Shukai from it and he would help us with anything that we thought we couldn't deal with. Uh, it turns out he had a family problem and he couldn't do with it. So before we got a single page of his things, we were already going through it. We were already setting it out and going. And our only real thing was to work together to try and iron out the problems as many minds, you know, make light work and all that. So, but he faded before it even started, really. So that post in 2010 is when he was still on board. Then he left without supplying a single piece of information for us because he was meant to supply it chapter by chapter or whatever the agreement was back then. I honestly can't remember the exact agreement, but we did nothing. So it was 100%, 100% done from the documentation. But this man out there has gone out of his way to spend hours trawling through the internet to pull up something that he thinks is going to prove Anthony Cummings wrong, but actually totally proves my story. We started with Nakashima, 2010 roughly. He didn't succumb together, so we used only those documentation. And this man has gone all the way around to try and find that to make himself look a little bit daft and to prove my story is correct. So it starts to get a bit embarrassing for these people. It's like, when are you going to think? Let's just find the truth. So the only person who ever helped us with the Bans and Shukai, are you ready for this? There's only one person who helped us with the Bans and Shukai from the original text. And that is Stephen Nogiri. Stephen Nogiri appears in our Bans and Shukai on lock picking because he helps us with the lock picking. And uh, it was it was baffling to do. It was really difficult. We spent weeks going through the lock picking chapter and he would pull out a few points and like fit into place and all that. And we gave him a section in the Bans and Shukai to explain. So Stephen Nogiri worked from the original documents. There was no type document then. We worked from the original documents and... It was Stephen who helped us with bits we couldn't understand on the lock picking section. OK, so that's there all from the original. So you see, guys, it, what's, what I'm finding difficult to work out is how people are waking up in the morning and going, how can I how can I push myself forward in my art and really dig deep into the history? I'm going to go through martial arts planet and search out a way to find to, to get some over anti Cummings, even though every time they try this, it proves me right. Every time, 100% of the time, it proves me I, my story never changes. It's exactly what happened. Because I've no need to lie. Whereas people trying to cover up for something or trying to trying to find something have to lie. So this gentleman has said we never work from original text. Now he's gone back and said that. It's just a big mess for that man, isn't it? Where it's a case of you can see somebody's just really, really trying to not find a the truth. They're trying to find a lie. You know what I mean? Or try to find a lie that's not there. Or create a lie. Or create an issue. So... There. Another one, I did a video on Yagyu 
Uh, simple fact. Fact number one. Fact with a capital F, right? There is no documentation yet, yet found to connect the Yagyu with the Shinobi. I'm sure people were crying on the other side of the internet. I was like, I got messages like, I oh, don't think so, I don't know. Prove it. You can't, it's in manga, it's in comics, it's in lots of comics. So comics is your... Comics is what you're going off for historical research. Comics. Somebody find me one connection between Yagyu and the Shinobi historically, not in a 20th century book, in a document. Now, I'm not saying it's not, guys. So before this gets turned, Anthony said there's nothing in Yagyu. What I'm saying is we need to find it. If it's so popular, it's either it's one of two things. Yagyu connection to Shinobi is from comics or there's a real connection there and the document is not is mentioned somewhere but we haven't followed up on it. Nobody's found it. Where is it? Let's find it, which is my question to you. But that's irrelevant. That's the different thing is it seems that it really upset people and it must be true. And then the other one I get is it must be true because Yagyu Ryu says it's true, but they haven't got a document for it. Come on, come on. So what's nice for me, guys, what's genuine, sorry, the light's a bit weird in here, isn't it? Sorry. What's genuinely nice for me is the fact that I'm 10 years on in, uh, 12 years on in this. I started my YouTube channel in 2008. It's now 2020. Obviously, I've been doing um, Bujikan Ninjutsu, if you like, or I started that in uh, late 1990s. And, but I obviously followed Stephen Hayes and Hatsumi since I was about six or seven. And I found a dojo eventually, which one opened up in Salford. And then I found an instructor. And we used to train in a place called Lim Dam near a lake, which I've explained many times, going in the lake at night. My story has never, never changed. It's always the same because it actually happened. And I got in the local newspaper for it and all that because we wrote like my, that, that Bougie Canis book I wrote. And it was just, then I changed everything. Not overnight, it was actually over a few years, but there was a one point where I was like, I remember exactly where I was. And it was two actually two points. And somebody laughed and went, all oh, the ninja people. And it was the first time that I realised the Japanese thought it was fake. I was like, wow, the Japanese thing is fake. So um, what I'm trying to say is um, basically I switched my entire thing overnight. So this idea of people sat there in the chairs, like gripping themselves going, I'm going to defeat Anthony Cummins. They've still not realised you can't defeat me for one reason is I spent a decade or so all my life from six, but properly studying Bujikan for a decade, with going all over the country and all that malarkey. I went to Japan and all this, and I went to Japan for two years on a row, uh, two years, not consecutive, but next to each other, bar one, because I went back to university. And it was like, I just shut it off and went, no, nope, that was wrong, let's readjust. So even if 100% of what I had researched in the last 12 years, 100% was wrong, it wouldn't make any difference because I'd just readjust to find the truth. And... But obviously it's not 100% wrong and anything I find wrong, I openly admit is wrong and we'll rechange it and we'll do it because I'm absolutely, that's why you could never win against me because I only want the truth. If everything was proven to be wrong, I'd just switch again and be like, okay, what's the truth? Let's find the truth. So I did booji up at this point, switched. That's not the truth. Let's find the truth up to here. And, and we're finding it, guys. We're genuinely finding the truth out. We're there. We're getting there. Um, we really have now got the ninjutsu, got ninja and ninjutsu, shinobi, 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 nailed down at the minute. I feel it's really well structured now and people are starting to get all the sections. The next step in ninja research, guys, is me to publish the um, unpublished ninja scrolls I've got. And I've got a ton of them. I've got loads of them to publish and some are big, some are small. I've got a really juicy, massive, but bigger than the Shoninki. No, none are as big as the Bansen Shukai, but probably about three or four sort of um, volumes of the Bansen Shukai's worth. I've got an amazing, um, I don't, I'm not trying to give anything in a way. I've got an amazing one that talks right about the ninja. I've got some mint stuff. I've got some obscure ones. I've got some, I've got the one Eager and Coco, the one that Serge Mall did. We've got all that. And the next step really would be to have enough time with the translators to actually bang a book like that, to get that done. And so we'll add more information for you guys, because I've got most of this information. Not all of it, because not all of it's translated. So that would be the next step and we'll really, really get Ninjutsu down. I'm just waiting for that. Basically, what we're waiting for is either book sales to go to the point where Yoshie can become full time and just crack on or 
um, another translator comes along, or just over the years we'll get it done. It's just a shame that we can't get them done so quick. It's, it's yeah, I feel for you guys because I have a, a you know I have got some of them. So there you go, guys. You've got now what's been dead nice for me is over the years when I first started this, it was literally the world versus me, and even when I had those people supporting me, any time I had to argue online, they just left, left me alone. Now, what's really nice is when I see you guys arguing in my calls and I'm sort of sat there and you guys are all over it. Oh, it's proved it right. And I don't have to answer some of the, I get some comments and I go to the comments and I'm like, oh, what's this guy? One reply. Let's see what he's added to his message. Somebody's arguing my case for me. No, you'll find it brilliant. I can't, you know, I can't fault that. Thank you very much. So what's happened is over the years that number of people who are against my work is so small now it's like a minority and no longer and they change their story every five minutes oh Anthony it is martial arts okay it's not martial arts but you don't know what it is okay you know what it is but you're wrong on this point okay you're not wrong on this point but we hate you uh, if you have an MMA fight then um, we might prove that your article from the 1940s is wrong come to our kendo dojo and we'll prove that the 1940s article is wrong you know what I mean? We're at the stage where it's like, really? Really, guys? You know what I mean? So anyway, I don't normally do this. And somebody the other day said, Anthony, don't feel you have to debate or argue with these people. But, and I don't anymore. I don't. I genuinely don't. But I do like those people who follow me to be kept up to date with. And I don't want you to be influenced by people saying, oh, the architecture's wrong. Anthony said this architecture is clearly wrong. It's not what I said. It says, isn't it interesting? that Westerners and the First Castle Keep coming are roughly within 30 years of each other. That's something to go on for. Or it's like, Anthony said Nakashima, he's helping him. But if you put the dates together, it matches the story 100%. And in this point, Nakashima had a family issue that couldn't carry on. So we got nothing for him. And it wouldn't mean we were working from modern text anyway, because it wouldn't be published. We'd be working from his typed version of the Banson Shukai, along with the original version, which never happened. We only worked 100% with the handwritten version of the Banson Shukai, like I've explained and explained. And these people will never be able to answer my questions. They'll never be able to do it. So anyway, there you go, guys. A uh, bit of a longer one. I hope you enjoyed that. So my advice to those people out there, so I've got advice for two, two people. If you're pro Anthony Cummins, Please do your best to either do one of two things. I give these people and say, oh, hold on, let's see, come on, you know, back up your own things or just ignore those people and realise that they're twisting everything I say to try and make something fake. But every time we bring it out, it's, I'm correct. And then um, uh, the second advice for the second lot of people is the people out there, the few, the handful, literally the handful of people who are really still against it is like, Step back and have a look. Are you trying to find the truth of history or are you emotionally over entangled in what you love? And you know it's wrong deep down. You know it's not a real system. You know it's been made up in the 1960s and we all know this. Everybody's getting to it now. Doesn't mean it's useless. Doesn't mean it's not pieced together from bits before it. But we know it's a 1960s, 1950s, 60s, 70s construction. We know this now. So is it the issue that you just over... You know what I mean? You can't deal with that fact. I dealt with that fact because I was one of you. I was in there. And I dealt with that fact in a heartbeat and was like, okay, crack on. What's next? It was a good while it was lasted. It gave me some good stuff. You know, I trained a lot. I did a lot of martial arts training for many, many years. Like, pff, ridiculous years. Uh, martial arts. But it was about 30 when I stopped really doing it and I just focused on military gun gungaku. Yep. So... There you go, guys. That's my explanation of that. We're coming up to 20 minutes. So best of luck. And uh, don't forget, guys, poppy day. Remember the dead, the glorious dead. And and something Stephen Ogieri wanted to say, actually, just before I go, is he's saying that if you're actually messing with people's history so much like this, that you're twisting it just to outdo one Westerner, to, but you're going to mess with Japanese history so much, you're actually really being disrespectful to the dead samurai who did it. Now, this is his thing. I'm not saying that he says it, but he's genuinely saying that. And I've been talking to Nigeria a lot. So uh, enjoy your time, guys. And I hope you debate these points well. And I hope you have good fun. Enjoy. And I hope everyone, enemy included, is well and healthy and having a nice time. And you're going to have a lovely Christmas because it's coming up. So enjoy, everyone. And good luck to all of you. <laughs>